visionary, passionate, problem solver, driven, risk taker, and responsible. And so if you have those traits, then odds are you're an entrepreneur. And I'll go one step further and I'll say that you are born with those traits. They cannot be taught. And so they've been with you your whole life. How would you apply that now? And would you have made the entrepreneurial leap? Yeah, that's so, so great because I was absolutely exhibiting all these traits. And, you know, one of the ways you exhibit these traits is if you tend to sell stuff when you were young, there's a pretty good sign that you are exhibiting these traits. So, so for me, you know, there's an old saying that says we teach what we needed the most. And so as I created this content, <clears throat> I was constantly thinking about my 18 year old self who was lost, confused. I was a mislabeled derelict. I mean, I was insecure and I just, I just didn't know. I just, I knew college wasn't for me and I knew I wanted to go make money. And so absolutely, if I had this sooner, I do believe I would have had a bigger jump start and would have kind of gotten there a little bit faster. But the way it shows up is a lot of different ways from 18 to 25 before I took over the family business. I can't tell you how many things I tried. I was going to open a travel agency. I did a mail order business. I got into real estate. I was real estate investing. And so it's, you know, that's one sign that you have all of these ideas. You're pursuing these ideas. You're taking huge risks. I mean, I've been- would you yeah, Would please. you say that you were successful at all of those things that you I tried? was a hor horrific failure at all of them, quite frankly. And, and that's I kind of ironic though, right? That like, like that would, it, maybe this entrepreneurial thing isn't for me. I keep yeah. failing at this, right? Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's one of the indicators is that every time you get knocked down, you just keep getting back up. It's insanity what entrepreneurs do, but we just keep getting back up because we're so passionate about you know, accomplishing something, you know, it's a, I'm convinced it's a disorder, but listen, I'm born with the disorder. So I'm going <laughs> to ride this wave and ride this horse and, and enjoy it. And it's been a blast. ELD, Entrepreneurial Elite Disorder. I like that. Yes, there you go. That, that's book two, the, um, the cure. Well, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, you said in the book that you, when you first started thinking about how college applies to entrepreneurs, you thought you were going to write a chapter on don't go. Yeah. But then after fully processing, you kind of said, well, maybe, maybe do go. Would you share a little bit? Because I think a lot of people are, and you made a great list of people who were, who were college dropouts or high school dropouts and people that, that were not, that were successful. Can you help people that are kind of wrestling with that? Yeah. Should I go? Should I stay? Kind of, you know, is it impossible for me to succeed if I didn't? Argument. Absolutely. So I wrote an entire chapter on this called College or Not. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I present all the facts. And the, and the short answer, and then I'll back up to some of the facts, is it's really a choice. You, you are not going to be any more successful as an entrepreneur by not going to college or going to college. That's what the facts show. Okay. And so it's, it's a choice. And at the end of the day, if you are not sure, you should probably go to college because you may need that degree if you really aren't a true entrepreneur and you've got to go get a real job. That's point one. Yes, you are right. I created two laundry lists of very successful entrepreneurs that did not go to college and very successful entrepreneurs that did go to college. The statistics show that it's about 44% of all small business owners have a degree, which quick math would say most don't have a degree. That's an right. interesting indicator. Right. And then I actually went into this with a bias. And so since I was about 25 years old, I would ask every successful entrepreneur that went to college and typically had an MBA, I would say, what is it you're using from your degree as an entrepreneur? And in every case, 100% of the time, the answer was nothing. And so I had a bias for about 20 years in that, why would you go to college you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur. But then what I started doing about five to seven years ago is asking a follow-up question. And I, I would say, if you knew everything you knew now, would you go back to college? And they said, yes. And that led me to ask why. And the reasons were two things. First of all, it was the relationships that they formed 
yep. uh, that are lifelong relationships now. Number two, it was a practice ground for them to make t-shirts, sell things. So they were able to practice on their student, fellow students for, for four <laughs> years. Um, and obviously there, there were the partying ben benefits of it, but we won't get into that. But at the end of the day, when you read that chapter, you'll see all the pros and cons. I also ask those entrepreneurs, if you did go back, what classes would you take? And you'll see a list of about 10 there. Uh, and so long story short, it's a choice. You're, you can still be successful as you know, 56% of the small business owners have proven. But at the end of the day, you've got to decide for you. Oh,